the series is the story of uh, an art student in Prague whose life is um, is pretty complicated. She runs errands for uh, her foster father, who isn't human, and the story takes her a really long way. By the third book, you know, it's uh, it's evolved a lot from that first story set in Prague, and I figure out how to talk about it without giving away too much, but um, it's very otherworldly, um, and yet it still has a lot of foundation in our world as well, and it's always fun for me to get to go to new locations fictionally and hopefully in reality too um, and there are some new new settings in this book real world settings that are fun for me these things come out unconsciously I guess that 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 sense of home and roots and rootlessness comes out in a lot of my books I think and uh, the sense of trying to find a place that you can belong and if it's not a place how people can be your place and uh, how I think you know, so many of us are searching for that. There's a line in one of my books that was uh, that mad choreographer, Chance. <laughs> and I, I'm, more, I'm more of that school, I think. But as a writer, it is really, it's sort of, I don't know, it's so seductive to think about fate and, uh, you know, what it would really be like. And, and, you know, if we really, if we really were caught up in something that we couldn't escape or what, what power we do have to shape our own lives. And, um, you know, I definitely think that we have free will within uh, the framework, the really complicated framework, but uh, I do love the idea of fate fictionally. <laughs> <laughs> Happiness as cake, I think the idea that you have to, it's, it's, it's your dessert, you have to earn it, and you have to get through all of these other um, courses first before you're allowed to have what you want, your happiness, and um, and that there's so much obligation before you can be happy, and I, I think that a lot of people maybe feel that way, and that life, you know, you're waiting for life to start a lot of people have that sense that, or it's really hard not to have that sense that um, that real life is in the future and you're just trying to get there. And, um, you know, so how do you get into that place where you're experiencing your life in the moment and finding happiness and making happiness wherever and however you can, despite all the circumstances? So I think that's what my characters are starting to figure out. I guess there were big changes. I mean, I, I'm not a I'm not a plotter though I thought I was uh, at one point and I would try to be a plotter but with something as big as this trilogy um, you know I had some story beats that I was aiming for all along the way in the trilogy and then in each story individually but I I never knew exactly what was going to happen or how it was going to happen there would be something I was aiming for hoping that I, the characters would find a true way to get there and sometimes they did and sometimes they didn't and it ended up going in a different direction so a lot of things did happen organically in the writing of this book that I did never predict and um, one of them is really how the title came to mean what it means and I had an idea that it would be this title um, even before it had the exact meaning that it ends up having or really it, it it's hard to talk about without giving spoilers but <laughs> um, but there's a new character in um, a new main character after along with crew and her name is Eliza and her story wasn't didn't end up being what I thought it was going to be it ended up being I think much more interesting than her how I originally conceived her so that was exciting I love it when that happens and that's I think why I don't try to force myself to plot out because I need to be able to discover stuff like that along the way really and without giving anything away I'll say she started out as um just wanting to have a human viewpoint character to experience through whom whose eyes to experience what was happening um, with the seraphim coming into our world and that was really her starting point and uh, as I got to know her more she became more interesting to me <laughs> I mean I, I feel like this book is you know this trilogy is finished but I certainly think it, it could be fun to write more in this world and more of some of the characters um, that's not my immediate plan right now but uh, it's definitely in there as I was drawing near the ending, um, you know, it, it didn't feel like, you know, a brick wall or anything. I certainly felt like I could continue mm -hmm. with the story. If you were a resurrectionist, um, what author would you want to bring back? Ooh. <laughs> hmm. Let's see. Can I say Mark Twain? Yeah. Yeah. And Mark what, Twain. What form would you give him? He, he's one of those people who should just really look exactly how he looked. <laughs> Close. Or maybe devil horns wouldn't be completely inappropriate, mm -hmm. too. Uh, there's a great quote of his that I, I love, of, of one of many, but it, it, it's, uh, my mother had a great deal of trouble with me, but I think she enjoyed it. <laughs>